North of the border, in Ontario's Algoma country, the Mishapakotan River flows into Lake Superior near Wawa, Ontario. This little-known river attracts a huge spawning run of Chinook salmon in September. On this week's episode, Fishing 411 TV's executive producer Mark Romanak teams up with river guide Brett Robinson to showcase what might be the largest population of wild Chinook in all of the Great Lakes. Mark and Brett use arrow slip floats and procure treated skiing to tempt fish after fish after fish into biting. The crew sets up salmon camp at beautiful Whitefish Lodge, located in the heart of Ontario's world-class fishing paradise. What a gorgeous fish. We're going to get a quick picture for Facebook and then she's going back to do some spawning. You work, work on him, I'll uh, see about clearing the boat up here for maybe a landing net. <laughs> that float didn't even drop. All it did was went sideways, and I was like, that isn't right how that just did that right after I twitched. That would probably take off, yeah. Well, they're kind of known for that. They are kind of known for it. That's my first good look at him. That's a good fish. <laughs> <laughs> We, we sort of had a look at him. Now, yeah, now, now he's, he's going gone. back where he's more comfortable. So, <laughs> that's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> There's nothing like them, how they can pull, turn, and just head downstream, and you need a really good reel. Especially what we're doing here, because we're in an anchored position. And so you're not only fighting the fish, but you're fighting the current as well. Uh, if we pulled anchor and went downstream with this fish, we'd land him faster, but then we'd have to come back up and re-anchor on the spot, and it's time consuming. So uh, if you can manage him, and it seems like you can keep this guy under, under management, uh, this is the way to do it. If you can walk a little forward, Brett, that would yep. be excellent. Throw your rod to the left. Oops, I just snagged my, my landing net. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't very nice, very nice. He's a very good fish to start the day. Beautiful. He's starting to get a little bit darker, but we will see silver fish today, even though this one's been in the river a little bit longer. So we'll get him unhooked and let him go. Our guest on this week's episode was Brett Robinson. And he's a young guy that lives up here in the Wawa area. We've known him for some years. What a wonderful young man. His parents have done an outstanding job of introducing him to the outdoors at a very young age. He is an extremely skilled fisherman. I think if you booked a trip with Brett, you would be very happy you did. Outstanding fisherman, outstanding young man. Not quite ready, but close. There we 
we got there we a go. nice job, Brett. That's a good looking fish right there. That is a good looking fish. And there's one that's silver. A little bit smaller in size, but a still good, Beautiful still fish. a really good fish nonetheless. And get them unhooked and let them go. Gone. Nicely done, Brett. <laughs> good job, man. Good job. That's an excellent fish. This week's episode was filmed in Wawa, Ontario. We actually stayed at a place called Whitefish Lodge. Now, Whitefish Lodge is located just a few miles east of Wawa on Highway 101, right on Whitefish Lake. But that's not where we fished. We didn't fish on Whitefish Lake, which happens to be a good walleye lake. We actually fished on the Mishpacotton River targeting king salmon. Well, just a little bit of a backstory here. Um, we're near Wawa, Ontario. It's part of Algoma country. And most people come up here to catch walleyes, northern pikes, lake trout. I don't think there's one guy in a thousand that even knows that there are king salmon to be caught up here. These are wild fish, and they are coming out of Lake Superior. And, uh, and man, will they keep you busy here. Um, no shortage of fish here. It's an interesting story, and we can get into some of the details, but uh, um, man, this is a lot of fun here. This is definitely a lot of fun. But I don't think this one's any too big. I got him pretty whipped here, man. Oh. Let me see if I can get him up here for you. <laughs> like I said, um, wasn't too awful big. King Salmon, wild from Lake Superior. Back he goes. Special considerations provided by Precision Trolling, the Troller's Bible. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's elite sport shows. You know, the rig that we caught our fish on is pretty common amongst salmon fishermen. It's a way of fishing spawn in a flowing water. Essentially what we did is the first thing we do is we put a bobber stop on the line. Then we slide a little bead onto the line. Then we slide our float onto the line. We tie a sinker on and then to the sinker we add a very short leader, 18 to 24 inch liter of fluorocarbon. And then at the terminal end we we're using a trocar octopus style hook. And the size of the hook could be anywhere from a six to a four to a two. And then our bait, in this case, is either going to be skein or a spawn sack. Hooked into another one. This one seems like a little bit better fish, or better than the last. I'm trying, to, uh, I'm trying to multitask here. I'm trying to cut spawn, rebait, land fish all at the same time. I think it'll be a minute anyways. No, we're good here right here. This is this is the nice nice lineup. There we go. There good we job, go. Brett. There's another nice one. That is uh, definitely a good looking fish right there. Good looking fish. Holy smokes. Peg right in you the are red hot, my friend. <laughs> well, you are on fire today. Well, you notice that we've been releasing these kings, and there's a pretty good reason. The limit is five fish, and if a guy wanted to keep some fish, it's probably not a big deal. They're pretty abundant. Um, but we're opting to release them, and the reason we're opting to release these fish is they're wild. These are not hatchery fish. Uh, Michigan stopped stocking these fish in 2016. Wisconsin and Minnesota stopped stocking these fish decades ago. Uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources in Ontario does stock a few, but only about 120,000, and that's way down at the other end of Lake Superior. And so these fish are wild fish. And as a result, every one that you release that spawns successfully perpetuates uh, the fishery and guarantees that this fishery will exist for, not only for us to take advantage of, but hopefully for Brett's kids someday to take advantage of as well. So we really strongly recommend that maybe you catch one or two that you keep for the table um, and let the rest go so that this fishery sustains itself for decades and decades and decades. That is absolutely a stellar Chinook salmon. Congratulations, Brett. Awesome. That is a beautiful fish. And what you really can't tell on camera, you know, the magic of video, but 
20, 25 solid minutes you were fighting that fish. Yeah. And um, what people don't realize here is that we're in an anchored position. And uh, because we're in a perfect seam and we're getting lots of bites and we're reluctant to move the boat, normally on a big fish like this, you pull the anchor and drift downstream and fight him as you go downstream. Yeah, exactly. Um, but we didn't want to give up our spot. And so we toughed it out and toughed it out. And this boy did one spectacular job at getting a beautiful fish in the boat. Congratulations, Brett. Thank you. Epic, absolutely epic. <laughs> On this week's episode, we actually got to break in a brand new boat. It's an 1866 Sportsman. It's made by Smokercraft. I put a jet drive engine on it. It's a 60 horse Evinrude, and it was an ideal combination for running skinny river water. You have to understand that uh, prop drive in a river can get to be troublematic very, very quickly. Jet drives allow you to run in shallow water. You'd never be able to navigate using something like a prop out drive. So if you're gonna come up and fish rivers like this, you're probably gonna find yourself best equipped with a jet drive. I think I'm gonna be able to control this one. Doesn't feel like too, too big a one. We've had a huge mix of fish from what I would describe as skippers, little guys, all the way up to really, really high quality fish and everything in between. And uh, where else are you gonna go and, uh, and catch this many king salmon in the day? This is pretty, pretty incredible. Pretty incredible indeed. From the spot we had this morning with that strong current, it was much harder to control. But here, we're in a nice back eddy, so we have a little bit more control over these fish. Not that you ever control king salmon. They do what they want to do. Brett, you are so fortunate to have this fishery in your backyard, my friend. I know people in Michigan who would give their left leg to do what we're doing today. Yeah, it's an awesome resource, that's for sure. It's unbelievable how many fish are here, actually. There we go. There we go. You know, what folks might find interesting is there's a few local folks here fishing from shore, and mostly what it looks like is they're casting spinners and they're casting spoons, and they're catching some fish. But they're not catching anywhere close to the number of fish that, we're, that we've been catching here on spawn. Brett has definitely got this figured out. You just can't beat spawn when it comes to catching spawning salmon. It is something special. Special considerations are provided by Trailmaster Trailers and Daiwa Corporation. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. If you find yourself in a situation where you're gonna fish skein, you're gonna need a unique knot called an egg loop. If you don't know how to tie the egg loop, it's really simple. I got ourselves a little handy dandy hook here. You probably don't need one quite this big for fishing. A little piece of rope here that's gonna simulate the fishing line. All you do is just slide it into the eye, bring it up on the shaft and hold it and pinch it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap forward towards the hook point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least eight times, and then I'm gonna pinch that and hold it so it doesn't uncoil. Then you go back to your tag end, run it back through the eye of the hook, the opposite way you did the first time, and then pull it up tight. Now, when you cinch this, you've created one of the strongest knots possible. Now, when you wanna add bait, like skein, all you have to do is back off the loop a little bit, create yourself a little loop, put your skein in there, pull it up tight, and it'll hold your skein. It's a simple knot, it's highly effective, and it's a knot you need to know how to tie. So what I'm doing is, as my float drifts past me, I'm bouncing the rod tip non-stop, and then I'll open my bale, let it float for a couple feet, and then pop it again, and then always continue to do that. That little extra movement is what creates that bite and gets you hooked up a lot more. Like there. So the best way to figure out how to do, how to jig your bobber properly is basically just experimenting. And that's all done by just jigging it, letting it float, jigging it, jigging it different ways. You might reel it in a foot and then drop it back and that might create a bite too. And those all work for great ways to target these fish and create a lot more bites. Ah, 
got them. You want to get a debate going in your favorite tavern? Ask somebody that's an avid salmon fisherman if salmon actually eat when they come in the rivers, because everybody seems to have a different opinion. If you talk to a biologist, he's going to tell you that by the time spawning salmon come into the rivers, their digestive system is no longer working and they don't need to eat food, they don't eat. That's what a biologist will tell you. But we've caught dozens and dozens of salmon today using spawn and every one is hooked down in the mouth. They eat the spawn. Now are they eating it for nutrition? I don't think so. I think there's something else a little bit more sinister going on. Think about it. These salmon are all in competition with one another. So if a salmon is going upstream to spawn and it sees the eggs from another salmon drifting downstream, it gobbles them up in order to eliminate competition in the world. It's all about that. So that's the reason why spawn works better than spinners or crankbaits or other types of lures for catching these spawning salmon. You just can't beat spawn when it comes to getting them to open their mouth and take it in their mouth. Every single fish we caught today, fair hook. You can't say that about other lures. This guy bit right behind the boat. <laughs> Look at that drag just sizzle. Fall king salmon run really starts at the end of August for us up here. Really the first weekend we can start catching them is at the very end of August, the last couple of days. And then it'll go all through September and some years you can even catch ripe fish still in October. We do have some cohos that will come up in the early part of October as well. But for the most part, they're all kings and they'll come up mid-September. There we go. Another good fish. Nothing big so far, but they're all pretty decent fish and still silver. Well, you might have noticed that the, uh, the size of the kings that we're catching here are a little bit modest. And there's a very good reason for that. Um, these fish are wild fish. They're coming up out of Lake Superior. And if you know anything about Lake Superior, um, it doesn't have a lot of forage in it. It's pretty sterile compared to a Lake Michigan or a Lake Huron or a Lake Ontario. So while these things are eating machines, kings are literally eating machines, there's not a lot out there for them to forage on. So on average, they tend to be somewhat smaller and they mature at a lighter weight or a smaller weight than what you'd associate with other areas. So it is just what it is. Um, there's a lot of you know, fish to be caught here, um, but the chances of getting 25 and 30 pounders are pretty much nil. A real good fish here is going to be a 20 pound class fish, but most of them are going to be in that 5 to 12 pound range. Uh, but boy, they're supercharged. You know, they, uh, they make up and fight for what they lack in size. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. <laughs> Looked up again. My goodness, this has been a riot. You know, off camera, between fish, we had a little discussion going on here. And the discussion was about line types. And uh, of course, we mentioned earlier today we were using braid. And Brett is a big fan of braid um, because it's more durable. And, uh, and I am too, I agree with that. But there are some certain instances where you might want to consider monofilament if you're going to do this style of fishing. Let's get his head up for you. Oop. One more circle. One more. One more circle. We Good got job. Him. Good job, Brett. Thank you very much. That was a lot of fun. Now that is a gorgeous fish. You know, in clement weather, cold freezing weather is not ideally suited for fishing with braid, and you're probably going to want to think about using monofilament if you're float fishing in freezing weather. But the rest of the year, you just can't beat the durability of braid. It's going to allow you to put a lot of pressure on fish like this and land many more fish and spend far less money on fishing tackle. That's a beautiful fish. <laughs> right after the twitch. 
you guess you got to have the right twitch. He's trying to get down. <laughs> I'll trade spots with you here. There we go. <laughs> now we're on the same side as him. Um, it does get pretty crazy around here at times. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Brett, I'm thinking it might be every man for himself here. <laughs> My goodness, is this something unique? It is definitely unique. You got one. Let's see if I can accommodate the second one here. We'll do a double scoopy scoopy if luck is on our side. Woo. That one looked like he might have had a lamprey mark on him. Yeah. Man, this is fun, guys. I'm telling you what, if you haven't, haven't caught a king salmon on light tackle, you really need to, to do it. Get out, do some light line fishing with skein. Floats, you will have so much fun. It is a riot. Okay, I almost got him under control here. Look at that. Now that is a pretty cool thing right there. <laughs> that is an absolutely awesome thing. Holy smokes. Well, hey, my name is Mark Romanak, and you've been watching Fishing 411. I'd like to thank Brett Robinson for showing us some of the most amazing salmon fishing I've ever seen. Hey, see you at same time, same place next week. Woohoo! That's a wrap. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Ontario, Canada, Starcraft Marine, Yakima Bait Company, Smooth Moves, Niagara Falls, USA, Lawrence Electronics, Evinrude Outboards, and by Jay's Sporting Goods.